The Reds overcame a deficit to defeat Lask in a contest that required more effort than they probably expected. Liverpool achieved their goal in Austria, but their 3-1 victory over Lask on the road also served as a warning for what lies ahead for Jurgen Klopp's team as they leave the top leagues of Europe. Even the most successful English representatives in this tournament tend to find it a drag, this competition asks a lot more of them in practice than it does on paper. They may be the overwhelming favourites to win the Europa League, that much was unquestionably true in Austria, where the visitors' victory required goals in the second half from Darwin Nunez, Luis Diaz, and a substitute. Even though there were 11 changes from the team that defeated Wolves on Saturday, Klopp's first lineup in the Europa League since Sevilla defeated them in the 2016 final was hardly lacking in talent. In addition to the two goals in the second half, summer acquisition Ryan Gravenberch made his entire debut, an impressive one despite being limited by injury, while Virgil van Dijk stabilized the defense. Even so, this wasn't quite Liverpool at its finest. When West Ham visits Anfield on Sunday, it is difficult to conceive that Mohamed Salah, Alexis McAllister, and Dominic Soboslai will be limited to the replacements bench. When a member of the Premier League's wealthy elite withdraws from the Champions League, this happens frequently. Even while this season has the exciting twist that the most successful nations in European club competitions will be rewarded with an additional spot in the Champions League, their top emphasis will always be local issues. Liverpool wants to compete for the top spot in the English league. In the Europa League, they want to perform well enough to win but not well enough to exhaust their reserves for Sunday. In Linz, Klopp essentially got it right, but his team was far from giving one of their best performances of the year. There was a little more dependence on star power and individual flashes of brilliance to unlock the last defense because there weren't the automatisms that come with a settled 11. This improvised 11 had a promising start, with the much lauded Ben Doak providing plenty of penetration from the right flank, but they were defeated by a sucker punch in the 14th minute. It was the kind of skillfully designed move that could only be executed by a well-trained unit. The massive centre-back Philip Zeres positioned himself in an ideal position to stop Gravenberch's dart to the edge of the box, where the ball had been passed onto Florian Flecker's right foot, while Sasha Horvath stood over a corner from the right. The blocking in front of him was so strong that Flecker had time to take a touch, put the ball in his stride, and swing it low through a crowd of bodies. It didn't really matter if Kui Van Kelleher had escaped their notice because neither he nor Allison would have been able to avoid the tremendous punch. And neither of those goalies could have been expected to make the incredible save on Darwin Nunez's header in the 28th minute that Tobias Lawal did. The Reds' number 9 appeared to need only to get his head to the ball to level the score as Van Dyke flicked a corner from the right into the danger zone at the far post of the goalie. He attempted to do so, but Lawal instinctively threw his glove out to stop him.